Richard, great chatting to you. Thank you. When last did you have a tie on? I think when I got knighted. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, uh, I think the Queen, I, I, I brought out a record called God Save the Queen by the Sex Pistols 25 years earlier. And I was already nervous that instead of putting the sword on my shoulder, she'd uh, lop off my head. So I thought without a tie, I might be in trouble. <laughs> um, I feel completely overdressed here, so I'm going to lose mine. The, and then we if, can if have If I a, had a pair of scissors, I'd cut it off. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Richard, so um, I grew up in a small town uh, in, in Harry Smith in the Free State. And I didn't know anything about money, about business. And then the very first book that I read was Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad. The second book that I read was Screw It, Let's Do It from mm. Richard Branson. And I remember at the time when I read uh, Kiyosaki's book, I just wanted to make money. Mm -hmm. But when I read your book, I wanted to become an entrepreneur because I think it's the coolest thing ever that you've done. And I've got huge respect for you and I know the business owners in South Africa also do. Whether you started a business 50 years ago, you're starting a business now, whether you're starting a business in London or in South Africa, there are always, always challenges. And my question to you is, how do you personally, as Richard, think about challenges in your own mind? And how do you personally solve it? I think um, when, uh, when there are challenges, that there are enormous opportunities. So, uh, you know, I, I hated flying on other people's airlines and, uh, and in, you know, just said, <laughs> screw it, let's do it, let's, let, let, let's try to, you know, buy a secondhand 747 and start an airline. Um, uh, and, uh, and, you know, so I think just generally, if you, if you look, if you keep your eyes open, you'll see situations where, um, you know, people are not doing things very well, and, and you can step in and in, in, improve people's lives. And effectively, if you do that, you've, you've started, a, you've become an entrepreneur and you've started a business. Um, and, um, uh, and you know, over the years, I mean, 1987. I mean, we've, there's been you know quite a few crashes, um, uh, and, and and you know, and I think in some ways, Virgin, you know, Virgin, um, the Virgin companies have come out the stronger from them. And, and um, I mean, recently since Brexit, we've seen a number of airlines going bankrupt. Um, you know, because people love flying Virgin Atlantic, you know, we've survived, and we've we, we you know we're able to expand with a short haul airline, Virgin Connect. Um, into routes that were otherwise, um, you know, operated by other people. So, um, so sometimes in struggling times, there are opportunities. So, so practical things for business owners out there. Are you saying just if there's a challenge, think of it as an opportunity. Don't ever see the negative. Is that what you're saying? Um, I'm, a, I'm a, um, you know, a born optimist. I will always look at the sunny side of things. Um, I sometimes fall flat in my face, and, and but, um, uh, but. It's so much, life's so much more fun to be an optimist um, and, um, and just to try, get out there and try things and, and, um, uh, and you'll learn, you know, even if it doesn't work out, you'll learn a hell of a lot from giving, giving it a go. Um, and, um, you know, I've just had a party last night for the new Branson Centre of Entrepreneurship here in South Africa and met a lot of these young entrepreneurs who are um, are doing extraordinary things, um, you know. There's, um, uh, you know, one one entrepreneur who's just set up a whole company with for deaf people selling coffee, um, and the, you know, a lot of these people were, were there, and it's going extreme, extraordinarily well. Um, and so, you know, in a sense, he's, you know, he's, you know, it's almost a social. It may be a social business, I don't know, but it's, you know, it is just like a like a social business. It's doing great. Um, and, um, uh, and, you know, he's absolutely convinced that they'll employ uh, 10,000 people with the Branson Centre of Entrepreneurship over the next um, two to three years. And, and I believe that, he, you know, that, that, that will happen. Mm. Talking about that, I saw that uh, the mission is to create sustainable purpose-led businesses. And I was wondering when I saw that purpose-led, like it's all over. Simon Sinek says, find your why. Everyone's talking about finding purpose, purpose. Is it really that important for you? Isn't it just about making money? I think you can do, the, you know, you can do both, basically. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, um, if you're running a purpose-led uh, business and it's losing money, it's not going to survive. So if you're going to be sustainable, it's got to be profitable. Um, but we've invested um, you know, a lot of money in 
uh, you know, in funds that are just purpose driven and, and they do, you know, at the end, the end of the year, they do a massive analysis on, you know, what, you know, how they've helped the SDGs or, you know, what, 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 what they've achieved from it. Um, and we'll definitely give preference over, uh, you know, investing in a company that, uh, you know, can kill two birds with one stone. I mean, like the, you know, deaf, deaf people selling coffee. coffee. I mean, it's, it's it, you know, and making money. So it, 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 it is um, uh, killing, killing two birds with one stone, or three birds, maybe. Three birds. <laughs> um, when we look at brands that people absolutely love, obviously Virgin, but if you look like at some of the new companies like uh, Uber and Tesla and even Apple, not that new, but people love it because of the tech. And personal service has become secondary to that. Um, I think like for myself, I don't even want to deal with people when I go and book, book something. I just want to go online and book it. Can you agree that some industries tech will just take over? Or do you think as Richard, there will always be that human element? I, I think, there, I, I hope and think that there will always be that human element. Um, I mean, Virgin is, is really sort of built on our people and, um, and them being proud of working for for, for the company and um, uh, and creating incredible things. I mean, like you know, we're just about to launch mm. a, cru a cruise ship company called Virgin Voyages, and um, you know, we'll have two thousand people working on each of our cruise ships that we build. Um, uh, you know, if we can deliver to them a product that is you know better than any other cruise ship in the world, which we mm. think we can do. Um, if we look after them, they'll smile, they'll be happy, and, and, and our passengers will be happy. And, and, and so, it, uh, every, it, it, you know, it, and, it, it, and, and if that works, then we're in a position where we can move on to, an, you know, take on another industry afterwards. Personal service, it's obviously what you're talking about. Um, and systems and processes are super important in the business. But you saying personal service and people and, and client service. And in my opinion, that, that's like almost contrary to one another. So what would your advice be? How do you build systems, but you still have the flexibility of, of people and making their own, their own decisions? And I think especially if you grow, because when you do it, when you're small, it's kind of simple, right? But when you grow big, it's, it's very challenging. Yeah, I mean, with Virgin Atlantic, uh, when we launched with one plane 35 years ago, um, I remember looking around on the, our first flight and seeing all these smiling, happy staff and thinking, you know, are we going to be able to keep that up for, you know, 35 years or 30 years or whatever it was? I don't think I thought 35 years ahead at the time, but 30 years. Um, and the great thing, if you go on Virgin Atlantic today, um, because they're proud of the company, they, they are still sm smiling, happy people. And, 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 uh, and if anything, I think that the, 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 the airlines uh, improved, um, which, is, which is rare in a lot of companies. And I think um, for, for um, a company to still have that kind of spirit after 35 years. Um, uh, anyway, says a lot about, about, um, about the team of people who say run Virgin Atlantic, who uh, you know, give, them, give them the tools to do the job. Um, uh, and, um, uh, and we try, you know, we, 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 we try to keep surprising the public, but also surprising our, our staff as well. Mm. The, the one thing that I'm super passionate about is to, to have focus on one thing, but that's like complete opposite Richard Branson, like go, go into everything. Was that always the case or do you think you focus, you make a success and, and you move on? What would your advice be to business owners out there? If I'd stayed in my first business, which is record shops, um, we would be bust. Um, and I know that you know, pe people, when I, when I was in my teens and early 20s, um, you know, people said he's stretching the brand too far um, you know, he's going to fall flat in his face. Um, but we, you know, but I'm, in, I'm inquisitive. I love learning about new things. I love trying new things. I love shaking up industries. And, um, uh, and so, um, you know, I think, um, you know, over, over the years, we've created maybe $18 billion companies in, in, in something like 12 different sectors. And that is just simply because I love, um, uh, you know, I love challenging the team around me. And, um, and you know, and, and being proud of, the, uh, you know, what the, the the new venture that we we do. It's it's almost unbelievable what you've created, but it's such an inspiration. And thank you so much for your time. Thank it's you. It's really amazing.